What's up, gamers? Lofty Castle comparison. Let's fucking go. So, before we get too far into it, in fact, I'm going to pause right here and just say this level has probably the most different routes uh, options um, of any level in the game. It's a very open uh, layout to the level, and there's a bunch of different uh, ways you can collect gems. None of them are really that intuitive. So, if there's one level you're going to like find uh, your own route for, it's going to be this one. Hummeldon has a great two part video that shows eight different routes compared to one another. Uh, the one that I do in this video is the second fastest, um, and with Sabooms being the fastest. Um, but um, overall, what's most important, rather than picking the objective fastest route, what's most important is picking one that you like, that you're not going to be a little bitch about dropped inputs or difficult supercharged strats, and one that you feel like you can optimize the most. It's much more important rather than what someone claims is a you know a time difference between this route to that route. You got to remember that's their execution of those routes, and that you have the potential to execute any one of those routes better than anyone else can in the world. So keep that in mind when you're picking a route for this level. Starting off with uh, actually a really cool jump here. What we do is uh, I actually came up with this strat where when you fly in, uh, you want to go left up. Check out the joystick here. I'm up left right here and then doing a charging jump. About to hit X right there. And then this way, you can't charge jump like just straight across this. But if you go left and then get a quick, a nicely timed charge jump right here, you can make it across with a little glide. And that gives you a perfect amount of time to flame out of the air. Um, this turkey's gem homes in automatically, so it's an auto flame charge pretty quick now we come around this way um, there's an easier way of doing this when you watch some of the other routes uh, you'll notice that they turn around and grab the gems first and then the turkey um, a very small time difference of two seconds but doing it this way does save you a little bit of time you just got to be clean with those flame charges even if you miss the, the double flame charge here you can grab one of them out of the air and uh, combo into the red gems pretty uh, pretty cleanly now this jump is a little bit of a cock sucking bitch because if you jump, you'd think that you'd want to jump like off of this side onto the left part here, but really the trajectory of Spyro's full hop into charge is going to be a little bit longer than what seems ideal here. Uh, so you want to jump off the right side. See how I'm kind of just coming off of this kind of right diagonal side here and then kind of cranking it. So I'm giving myself room to get onto that ledge. Uh, if you, as you can see, if you go kind of further to the left this way, um, you're gonna bonk. So uh, it's really hard not to bonk on this, uh, but with a nice confident full hop charge, you don't even need to glide out of that charge. You can just full hop charge it. Uh, and with that, with the angles there, you'll make it. You'll make it to this guy on time for his cycle. That turkey right there is a bitch. You know, you loved it. it a level like this is, is so funny because at every moment, there's a potential for something to go wrong and you have to be ready for it. This turkey right here, the tendency is that your flame will go underneath him. So I try to get my flame out either really early or really late. Um, this is one of those scenarios where, uh, where a normal flame timing will probably miss him. And again, those turkeys auto flame charge, so you don't have to worry about getting close to them when you flame them. Their gem homes in automatically. Now I go off to the left here. There's a key difference between my strat and the Saboom strat. Um, you got to get a uh, mushroom here. You want to be blue sparks coming out of this area. Um, if you're not, it's okay, but it just uh, makes the next part a little bit more dangerous and you have to rely on lucky mushrooms after this point if you're not blue sparks. Also, the mushroom RNG here tends to be a little bit of a bitch. So if you get like a mushroom that's like inside the cage, what will happen is you'll flame the cage, but it, it'll body block the mushroom so you won't end up hitting it. I recommend in general with fodder in this game, not fucking around and turning around for five plus seconds to get the fodder when you really don't need it that much. If one of them, if the fodder cucks you over here, just keep going with the green sparks. You can make it work. It'd be faster in the long run. If you're confident in your gameplay, of course. Now this jump is one of the trickiest in the game and not because it's particularly hard to execute, but because uh, this is one of the harshest lag spikes in the entire game. Um, in Spyro, levels load in chunks. So when you cross over certain loading zones, it incurs lag and that lag can drop inputs. Now the space in this void right here is one such loading zone where it's uh, loading another chunk of the level. So, um, you want to jump, the, in order to get around the dropped input, you want to jump to the left here. Notice how I'm kind of on the left side with this. When I come off of this platform, you don't want to be beyond this little, uh, this little point between these two polygons. If you jump further to the right here, like if you kind of like come out that way, um, you're more likely to get, see how I kind of like go off to the left a little bit? 
go left to right rather than right to left here. It'll save you dropped inputs. And we'll be coming back through this area to do this jump one more time later in this route. 69, hi. So yeah, you can see right off the bat, there's some, there's definitely some tough stuff. Unlucky damage I took there, but hey, we got the spark, so it worked out. Now check this out. We actually take a shot from the, uh, from the red guy here. And if you come, if you come into this area correctly, you can bait out the shot so it comes quickly. Now here, here the shot came relatively quickly, and it's all had to do with, uh, and that's part of the reason I fell in the water is because I was trying to have a very specific line in this area where I'm bearing left. You want to bear left. I meant to get a charge jump here, but you bear left. And then you kind of go through the middle of this box in order to bait out the guy's shot to the right early. So he shoots at you. Then you can set up against this curved wall here. When you damage boost against it, you bonk into it. Take a look. He bonks. And, <laughs> look at his face. <laughs> Someone make an emote out of that. <laughs> you bonk into that. And then um, you bonk as the uh, arrow hits you, which pushes you against the wall, which shoots you up because the wall is curved. And then if you're mashing X at this point, you can get the glide out quickly enough. Notice I'm zero sparks here. I was green sparks before getting shot. Now I have no sparks. If you're quick enough here, you can charge into that fireworks chest while still maintaining invinci uh, invincibility frames from the damage of the arrow. So if you're quick there, and again, you got to be confident with your inputs in a level like this. Otherwise, you know, I've had, what? Well, how many spots were there where I could have potentially died from a slight, like, missed input type of thing, you know? Uh, this level is all about confidence in your in your gameplay. Okay, kind of. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I missed the blue there. That was kind of a scrub, uh, scrubby cleanup there. But uh, essentially, with this box, uh, there'll be one yellow that uh, stays there. See, I collected all of them here, but I wasn't sure because I got a big fountain at this spot. So I was like, "Ooh, normally you might get a blue, an extra blue that's like you're not ready for." So I was a little flabbergasted by this. Also, I got lucky that I got a um, a mushroom from this damage right here. So, oh, well, actually, I had to flame it. So that's part of my... Yeah, so what happened here, all in the span of like less than a second, I charged into the thing, noticed that I didn't take damage, realized I had to get a fodder, and in getting a fodder, realized that I wouldn't be automatically collecting these gems out of the fountain that they uh, spawn out of. So, with all those things considered, you can understand why I was a little bit apprehensive to leave this platform early. I really had to make sure I got all the gems there. Anyways, excuses. Oh, that red gem back there? Ugh. This these gem I don't know who put these gems here. These are just static gems that, are, that just spawn into the map. Why are they so close to this ledge? If you get too close to them, what ends up happening is you'll jump into this ledge and you're jump, you won't be able to jump all the way up, even with a full hop. But if you're too far away, you know, if you fade back too far, then you'll miss this gem right here. So be really careful with these two gems. I've lost a lot of runs to missing uh, this gem in particular. And now look at these fucking mushrooms, dude. They're coming right for me. You see, I'm like trying to dodge them and shit. Sometimes what I'll opt to do is just glide into this drag. If I know those mushrooms are coming into me, it's better that you don't run into them because you're always going to be below gold sparks at this point due to the damage, um, due to the damage boost. So um, I recommend gliding. If you, if this mushroom's on like a kamikaze path towards you, you just glide into the dragon, take a little flop off the off the mushroom, take the frames there because if you hit the mushroom and Sparks is playing with him after this dragon, take a look. It's going to make the gem cleanup a lot trickier. Now look at these gems we have here. I got to Okay, so look at what happened with the camera here. See, why am I why is the camera not directly behind Spyro? Well, the culprit is right here, this little mushroom guy. And part of the danger of leaving mushrooms alive here is that they can proxy you. Um in Haunted Towers at this level and uh in the home world, um after touching dragons, um you can, if there's fodder next to you, you, Spyro will spawn inside of the fodder and get proxied out, get bounced out of them, which fucks up the whole camera like crazy. And whatever movement you were holding, notice I'm holding like left up on the joystick. I would have normally been holding like just square here. I was just holding square here, but when I saw the camera got fucked up, I had to turn the joystick. Um, if the joystick's pointing a way you think you're going to go, but you get proxied and the camera's all fucked up, I've had it happen to where I just charge straight off the edge. Get a big old proxy, camera fucks up, turns you around, and you just 
charge off the edge. And th- there's nothing you could do about that. You know, it's like, that's just the way it goes. And another crazy thing about that is if you die right here, like if you charge off the edge after a stupid proxy, then it's entirely possible. And again, I've lost runs to this where the game will crash when it respawns you at this dragon because there's too much shit to load because this is a really big level with a lot of actors in it. So um, the game's sound will start when you, you'll die, respawn at the dragon, but the game won't fully load. It'll like, you'll hear the sound, but you'll be soft locked. So be careful at this section, you know, <laughs> and throughout this whole level, be careful, but be confident. That's like my advice in general here. Now, because I had sparks, I was able to collect that green pretty easily. You, I could have also opted to grab, um, the red and the green here like that would have been optimal is to grab this green and then jump charge the red and keep going And that way the cleanup is cleaner when you're coming back this way through this area But let's take a look at it So I just grabbed the green guys coming down on a nice cycle I would have liked to hit the fairy chest at the same time be careful with those two reds You can tell sparks is being a little bit of a cocksucker with these two reds. That's just how he is some gems you know, just some scenarios in this game, Sparks will just, like, go for the gems every time. But here, you know, in sections like this, take it a little slow. With these two reds, they will cuck you. And if you if you notice, if I would have grabbed this red earlier, then that would have given me a cleaner line through these three gems. And again, I wouldn't have been able to do any of that cleanly if I'd have grabbed a fodder before the dragon. So that's why I, I stress uh, avoiding them there. Taking the glide, if necessary. Those gems are pretty lenient, thankfully. Coming back through this way, grabbing the gems. I like, okay, so there's a couple of strats you can do on these uh, turkey guys. We're just talking about saving frames here at this point. Obviously, you can just charge through them in flame. Um, sometimes you can, uh, if you don't like the pushback from the turkeys, because, you know, you hit them and they push you back. Like, let's look at this in full motion and just observe how they push you back when you charge them. See how they kind of push you around a little bit? It wasn't so pronounced there, but with, like, the doggies in Dark Passage, for example, that's, it's really common that they'll... You'll, you'll be charging through a line of them and one of them will push you off so far to the side that you'll like miss the next thing in line there. So um, you can double flame charge these first two, you know, flame, flame. And again, they automatically uh, home in their gems. Flame these two, flame these two, and then flame this guy. I personally think it's faster. You can f uh, flame these first two guys, but I think it's fastest to flame right as you're about to hit this guy and get the flame to hopefully not body block and trail all the way to the red guy here. It just barely hits him that way. So let's take a look at from that last guy. Flame right at the last moment and it hits the red guy. And that's how I like to do it. Now, you got to be careful if you're moving that quickly, though, through this section. Because at this point, let me uh, show you the exact point. Right about where the red guy is. When you cross this red guy right here, probably right at about uh, this point. Now the cycle, the balloon guy cycles inside this tower are starting because you're at that, you're close enough and you're looking at them. So you've, you've started their AI, you've started their floating cycles. Now, why does that matter? Because if you're not on the right cycle, then the strat that I'm going to be doing coming into this area and notice all this movement here, I'm not pushing against the wall super hard. See, I'm kind of staying wide right here. That's all part of um, being on the right cycle for the balloon guys. Now I might be a little fast here. And look at that. This guy is floating right up into me exactly where you want him. Uh, coming out of, ideally coming out of this uh, wind tunnel here, you want to be holding uh, right or slightly down right and then press square. This is the trick to this, is you press square r the moment after you begin your glide. Look at my square input here. I'm gliding, I'm gliding, I'm gliding, I'm gliding, then the square input comes out. I let spiral glide, you're supposed to let spiral glide for the least amount of time possible before pressing square. Now that I think about it, that might be the trick to the Dr. Shemp tower strat that eluded me uh, from Saboom, but I'll have to test that later. Anyways, by doing this uh, slight extra glide here, you guarantee yourself all of the gems up here while charging off the ledge. If you don't do that, you're going to miss this gem right here and of course being aware of your cycles up to this point you're gonna know whether this guy's gonna be early or late i was almost too early with this guy but um i made it work because i was going a little bit wide coming into this area um outside the tower again if you if i'd have been um if i'd have been really pushing up against the walls there then i might have missed him because i would have been too early Nice double box there. With that double box, be careful not to charge too quickly out of it. It's really easy to, uh, this is an easy double to get, but it's hard to not, because look at the camera here. It's hard not to bonk on this, on this wall right here. So keep it moving, but don't be too hasty. Same thing with these corners right here. Like this is a section where you're going to bonk like a bunch if you're too, if you're trying to go too fast. 
really give those corners some room. You guys know in this game, the corners are like bigger than you think, you know? Give these corners some room so that you're not bonking for no reason. Also, I'd like to point out that I'm jumping into wind tunnels here. Uh, by preserving forward uh, momentum while going into a wind tunnel, let me just play this in slow-mo, jump into it. See how I'm doing a full hop into it rather than a uh, charging jump into it? Um, that preserves upward momentum uh, and saves time during the uh, wind tunnel. Little bit of a left press here. If you just hold square, you'd think you could just press, you could just hold square here, but due to the way the camera's oriented, it actually ends up pushing Spyro to the right. Um, so X square and then just a little bit of a left press there. Left to right. Do I even have a left press here? Am I lying about that? It doesn't look like I actually ended up pressing left. Oh, well, I guess I'm lying. Usually I'll press a little bit of left there, but um, you're curving it. Basically, you're curving into the... I mean, it's straightforward. You're curving into the uh, key and grabbing the boxes. Now, with the key, just one thing to keep in mind. With this key, if you game over in this level, which is likely to happen, right? At this point in the game, you're very low on your life count, and it's very easy to die in this level, as we've seen up to this point. Um, if you die and game over, uh, you have to come all the way back up here to collect this key. Um, otherwise you can't open the, um, the strong box. If you die and don't game over, then you'll keep the key. So remember that it's very important for this level and how you recover if you fuck up. You'd have to come up here anyways, even if you wanted to supercharge through the strong box. Now, speaking of supercharge, let's just take a look at this strat and then we'll rewind and talk about it a little bit. Okay, so that whole supercharge right there, while I'm uh, rewinding here, that whole supercharge is has everything to do with your speed, your speed and your angles. Um, you have to get with supercharges, you have to get intimately familiar with um, the direction of floor polygons. And I'll explain what I mean by that in a second. Take a look at how I jump into this. So I do a full hop charge into this. You don't have to. Um, but by doing this, I got myself more speed. If you're familiar with my supercharge explained video, um, if you jump and then uh, charge out of a full hop onto the first incline, out of the first babyest incline of a supercharge ramp, that's what gets you the most speed on them. So uh, in this particular run, I wanted to get the most speed possible just to go fast. And you don't jump off the edge of this. One thing to be careful of is um, is if you like cut it off, if you cut off of this ledge too hard, it's definitely possible that um, the supercharger will just get cucked and uh, you'll lose it and flop off the edge. So just I try to aim for this little point right here where this polygon meets this polygon. And I just aim and try to go straight through it. Curve it off to the left and then down into here. You want to pre be pressing X like right about here. You don't want to press X too late here. If you press X too late, you're going to go too high. Especially with the amount of speed that I have here, you're going to go way too high if uh, if you press X uh, later rather than sooner. Press X sooner rather than later here. Oh, hold on. Let's, uh, let's, let's watch that in full motion. X. And now I'm at this point, we're assessing our height. You know, like we're human, we're always going to be having like slightly different speed and slightly different express execution there. And that's going to have wildly different um, outcomes on the on your height at this point. So sometimes you're going to be higher than me here. Sometimes you're going to be lower. Now, this was a nice like medium height here. So what I did was around this point right here. I'm thinking to myself, I'm thinking, OK, I got good speed. I got medium height. I'm just going to give it a little zigzag. Take a look at this. Give it a little zigzag just to make sure I go through the bottom parts of these uh, flame chests or fan chests instead of the top. If you go through the tops of these flame chests, fan chests, you'll still break them, but there, it's you'll probably miss like this gem right here if you go through the top fan part rather than the bottom metal part. So that's what I'm aiming for. Um, if you go higher here, then it's really as simple of a correction as moving left in the air and then to the right again, just making it like a, a more ziggy zag kind of uh, movement. But if you have less speed here, then you can just go straight through the uh, fan chest and guy, um, which is ideal. Move through him, kill the fat guy. Now you can see all the gems have homed in here. Now this section right here, this is the hardest part of the supercharge and this part, this exact spot right here is usually what stops a lot of people from going for this route is going for this jump right here. Now let's take a look at it, jump. And so how do you get enough height to make it to this ledge? See, I barely made it to that ledge. Um, 
it's very specific the uh the sort of approach you need to have here you need to come left kind of in this area i would say i was just aiming like slightly left to the dragon here is maybe where you want to be going so that way you can give yourself a nice curve see i had to like readjust the curve i didn't have a very nice curve there i had to readjust it so that's why it ate some of my height and now you want to jump off of this these polygons right here basically there's like two of them uh, but you want to jump off of this part. If you jump off of this part, you're fucked. If you jump off of this part or this part over here, you're fucked. Um, also, you want to be having a good curve there so that you don't get uh, your supercharge cucked by the toilet bowl here. Um, you can jump over it, but what will end up happening is if you don't jump to the side and instead jump over this, um, the supercharge will like hit the lead, the edge, and get canceled. So that's why it's extra important to be coming extra left here. See what I'm saying? And I could have like gone even further forward before turning right. You see how I had to kind of readjust my uh, go frame by frame. You can see I kind of was holding right and look at the joystick. I like let go of it for a moment and then recranked it to the right. You want to just basically not have to do that. But you can see there's little micro adjustments that are happening here because I'm I'm knowing all of these things that can go wrong and where I want to hit the ramp and how I want to hit the ramp. These things are really important. These are the sorts of things you should analyze when you're uh, going for a trick like this, rather than just bashing your head against the wall with this whole supercharge and saying, oh, well, you know, you do this and then and then you jump too high and you go too far. It's like, rather than be like, oh, well, fuck, dude, the super, it's too hard, strat's too hard. It's like, you got, okay, well, zigzag a little bit more right here, right? Or if you go too slow, you know, think about like trying to get more speed on the supercharge ramp like I did with the jump in, or you could do a charging jump or try landing on different parts or try falling off the supercharge ramp at different parts or coming through here, you're going through this guy, aim a little bit, you're, say you're not getting a good jump here, aim a little bit further to the left, curve it in a little bit harder, that'll help you. Try jumping at different points on these polygons here, uh, you know, use different trajectories. You guys see what I'm saying? You have to take a really critical approach to how you uh, do like these really like um, nuanced little supercharges. This is a very nuanced supercharge section. And uh, the more you do it, especially with this supercharge, the more you do it, the more you analyze and say, okay, what went wrong there? What went right there? Um, the better, the more consistent you're going to get at it. And that's why I really like this particular supercharge route rather than the Saboom supercharge route, because that one's more kind of like, you got to get lucky with the bump, which you can check out in the Hummel Dawn um, comparison video that I have linked in the pinned comment below. Anyways, jump off this part. The rest of this is pretty easy. You just got to be careful at this section right here that you don't go too far off the left-hand side here. Um, go off the right-hand side so that way you don't bonk on, on the side here. But I think I did miss the red. Yeah. If you go too far off the right, then you'll see how... You guys remember how I was talking about if you go through the top parts of the fan chests here? That's exactly what happened here. Like, imagine if, if what happened with this fan chest. Let's watch that. Look how I go through the top of it. I'm not collecting that gem because I'm going too far off the top of it. If that had happened with the two fan chests uh, earlier in the supercharge, I would have been totally fucked. I would have had to make a super lengthy recovery for that. I would have had to death abuse and do it again, basically. But in this case, it's not as bad. It was like really a trade-off in this case where I was like, you know what, to be safe, I'm gonna go for the top rather than potentially bonking. Now here, in order to get this extra flame, now that was executed beautifully right there, and that's actually one of the toughest, uh, I guess like fan chest flame extensions, you could call it. Um, because if you're just stationary here, even in this spot, if you're just stationary here, you're not going to have enough distance with the flame. You can you see that I'm like walking towards the thing a little bit. That's the key. But you don't want to walk too far because then the then you'll get away from the green, right? You see I'm almost too far away from the green. Sparks being an extra homie to grab this one. But essentially, get up in the corner of this. So I'm right up in, up here in the corner. Get on the edge of it and on that third flame. Crank it around while walking towards this. That's the key, but don't walk too far for the green, okay? And then you'll have plenty of room for the flame charge. It's all good. Now, with these guys, you're going to want to go for the one that... Uh, you might you might get the feeling that if, like, say one of them was going up at this moment, that it's like, oh, you don't want to go for him. But, make, but remember that if you do a flame charge jump, it can extend almost to their tippy-top height. Almost. So even if they're ascending and it looks like they're getting away from you, you can still go a flame, for a flame charge jump on, on the ascending one. Now here I got a lucky cycle on the left guy. And he was right there. But you see, I still went for that flame charge jump just to be safe, getting over the ravine there, right? Very easy to fall into this, this little gap right here. Really easy to fall in here on this section and on the come around as well. So now see what happens here. Here's Turkey Island. This is a part that a lot of newer players fuck up. This is a, this is a tough section movement wise. And I come around pretty solid. Now, there is potential for more optimization here, but this was like a very easy and clean way of doing it. Now, let me talk about some other potential um, scenarios here. 
So say you want to get this guy now. It's pretty much the same execution. You'll be able to get the, not this turkey, but the next one in line here. You'll always be on this turkey cycle, basically. Um, these aren't global cycles. These cycles trigger when, you, uh, when you're jumping from the ledge before here. So these turkeys are basically always going to be at the same spot. If you get a quick kill on one of these two big fatties, you're going to always have that uh, turkey right there, basically. But with that said, say I accidentally hit a, uh, a mushroom here. And now Sparks is fucking with a mushroom. Well, that causes problems at this section because even though I can flame charge these uh, turkeys, I can't grab the gems. And an interesting thing to note about this section is that in almost every other um, case in this game, if you're on top of like a raised ledge like this, a little, see I'm kind of on a curb here around the, um, around the water. You normally Sparks would not be able to see underneath Spyro to grab the, these gems. But in this one case this is the one exception where sparks can see so you do want to run along these uh these little rimmed edges here because uh that's the shit that uh sparks can see that but now okay but so going back to our hypothetical here say sparks is fucking around with a fodder right now well it's an easy recovery you just kill the say sparks wouldn't be grabbing those gems you kill that last turkey and then you fade it back and then run all the way back around the rim the way you came and by that time sparks will have his uh fodder collected and you'll be good now one more um thing i want to mention in terms of optimal movement is if i'd have been blue sparks here or better then what i could have done was um, full hop. When I full hop flame charge this guy, I could go across the water, ignore this guy, go across the water, and go take a straighter line to the uh, ferry platform over here, which is where I'm trying to go. You see, I'm kind of going really wide here to be safe. I'm waiting for this guy. Okay, don't get tripped up. Try like you might accidentally flop off this curb and go into the void, right? So don't get tripped up. Jump off of the of the rim to get that guy. But yeah, so those are just some um, example, like hypothetical situations there. Um, if you're blue sparks here, you want to try to f fly across the water and get this guy when you're coming around for the fairies later. Now check this out. I jump on the rim here. I did this earlier in the level as well, but you jump on the rim. There's space for you to stand on the outer part of this wind tunnel platform. Uh, so if you uh, charge jump, if you jump charge onto the side and then take a look at this full hop into the uh, wind tunnel. It works on the same property that I was mentioning earlier where you preserve upward momentum and save time on it. Even though it's technically more, even though it's technically like you get into the wind tunnel later, you end up exiting it earlier. So with a uh, good execution, it is faster. Now with this guy, um, this guy is the whole reason I say you might want to, if you have a good sparks, if you have like blue sparks, this guy is the whole reason you would want to go across the lake here because very rarely will this guy be on a good cycle unless you're absolutely really pushing the movement like crazy. And it's really only going to happen if you're flying across the, uh, the lake like that and taking the damage, uh, the damage there, uh, in order to preserve your straight lines and not grabbing that other guy early. Um, but since I fucked around for long enough, it was it's all good. You know, you're just going to have to end up waiting most of the time anyways there. Not a big deal. Flame the fairy first here because we're going to have to wait. This is the final fairy and we have to wait for all three of the fairies to congregate here before we can continue with the rest of the level. Um, the Saboom Strat, uh, just talking a little bit about like a different route here. Uh, the Saboom Strat does a supercharge um, that uh, goes to here and bounces off this curb to get up here so that we don't have to wait for the fairies. And that's where the main time save of that strat is. But it creates a whole different type of cleanup for Turkey Island, which is <laughs> frankly a lot easier to fuck up. And uh, yeah, it's the potential for optimization is there, but um, I really like this route for me. Going back to the reason I kind of go with this route regardless is because uh, this route has like the highest level of like confidence in the execution for me. And so at the end of the day, it ends up generally saving me more time than even if I did get the Saboom route. Um, you know, I would have to like get the spoon route like perfect, perfect, perfect in order to nail. Not saying it isn't doable, but um, you know, it's it just says something about the level of confidence with the route you choose, leading you to a better uh, end time with that a particular segment. Anyways, we hit the uh, ferry first. We wait, we wait, and then we jump into the thing. These ferries, the moment that third ferry gets in there. Um, you can be at any vertical point in the wind tunnel. So you can see she's just barely getting there. I was a little bit far ahead. I could have even been a little higher on that. And the higher you are on that wind tunnel, then obviously the less time you're going to spend in it. Go for the double here, but be careful, right? If you miss that, you're going to have to go all the way back. If this guy's ever on a bad cycle right here, you're going to want to just charge through. The, like, so say I can't flame him here. He's on like a weird cycle, um, hypothetical situation. 
You can just charge around him and then grab him uh, after this fireworks chest. But luckily he worked with me this time. Now because I was green sparks here, I had to wait for that fireworks chest to explode. You know, way she goes. Got a lucky fodder there, so we're back up to blue sparks. You'll love to see that. Okay. Coming down here to this spot, uh, you could do a jump charge to get down here, but um, it's really not a big deal. As long as you're coming in diagonally around the face of this, that's what's important. You know, your angle of approach here, you're going to have to do some sort of weird zigzaggy stuff. So just be be aware of how finicky these uh, uh, strong boxes are and get in there with a, with a nice angle. Coming around this um, wall, this last ending part uh, right here has definitely the potential to lose you a lot of time if you don't do it right. Uh, you got to come hard against this wall. And I mean come hard. You guys know about what I'm talking about. You got to come to the left against this wall. Already be pushing against it in order for you to hit that left box right there. If you miss it, you'll have to recover it and then it'll be all fucked up. You come to the left here and what this is a this is like a, a Deo exclusive strat I never really see other people going for this but I really like going for double spring chests here and here since we have the one red spring chest in the game I mean we got to do it justice by going for the double so what I do is I uh, flame these guys but I bear my flame to the left so that way I don't accidentally hit this green spring box let them die grab the blue don't worry about the green because we'll grab that afterwards jump as they're raising and keep it moving. So let's watch that all in full motion again coming around this section. Push up against the wall. Grab that. It's not hard to dodge those two guys' shots. Grab those. Make sure you're flaming the, that uh, that fairy cage. Otherwise, you'll bonk on it. And then try to flame this guy into this little uh, wedge here. Into this corner. This little alleyway. So that way you give yourself the best chance at the blue giving you an optimal gem trajectory. Sometimes it doesn't work with you. Sometimes the gem floats into the guy's body. Sometimes he floats outward. Um, but you want to collect that gem out of the air like I did there. So that way you can exit the level comfortably. And there you go. That's Lofty Castle right there. Sub 108. And that was on my 122.13. So uh, we're going to definitely beat that, I think, on my, <laughs> on my next run in the future. There is still a couple of mistakes there. But overall, I would say that was a pretty softy, pretty softy Lofty. <laughs> pretty solid lofty and uh i'd be happy with that in a run for sure and indeed i was on this uh on this former world record but again if you guys want to see some other lofty strats do check out the humble dawn video in the description and uh or pardon me in the pinned comment and guys just have a wonderful day i'm about to head off to work here i'm going to be streaming later on tonight so tune in if you want to see a potential world record get broken but besides that guys have a beautiful day Stay fucking sexy and just keep being yourself, man. I believe in you. I fucking believe in you, dude. Don't you ever give up on yourself, all right? Whether it's in this game or in anything else. You just keep going for whatever the fuck you believe in. And don't let anybody tell you that it has to be a certain way, okay? Don't let any, Not even me. I just spent a whole 20-minute video explaining to you how it's supposed to be a certain way. Don't even listen to my shit. Just go off and fucking blaze your own trail. And to that, I say cheers. Keep chugging. Cheers!